Very well. Okay. Very good. So uh, we actually five minutes ahead of schedule, but uh, uh, but uh, you can get this five minutes extra for, for in favor of your talk. Are you ready? To sure. Start? So then I'm presenting our last speaker in this section, who is Dmitry Archinikov from the University of Washington and I guess also University of Kansas now. And the title of his talk is Control and Harnessing of Carol Edge Modes in Topological Magnet Mandamus of the Light. Thank you, please. All right. Um, can you guys see the right screen? Uh, yes, but uh, yes, we, we see we, we see it. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let me fix some things here. Um, Just a moment. Okay, now we should be good to go. Um, thank you so much for staying so late and thank you for the introduction. Um, I also want to thank organizers for inviting me, uh, especially Ahmed Afshar and also Oleg for introduction. Uh, anyway, I'm Dmitry. As Oleg mentioned, I'm in between the jobs. Um, I'm in the Department of Physics, University of Washington, and in a few days, I'll start my own group in the University of Kansas. And uh, today, I'll be talking about this manganese bismuth telluride, a layered topological magnet. Uh, all right, uh, so this work was done in the group of Professor Sharong Shu. So I want to acknowledge him for help and continuous support and also people in bold, in particular Jiaqi, Zhong, Zaiyao, and Xiong are people with whom I share first authorship on the works I'll be presenting today. And also collaborators who did various types of measurements help and also provided very high quality crystals. For example, Jia Chang Yan from Oak Ridge National Lab. And also of course the funding agencies. So today I'm going to talk to you about topological quantum matter, which is a little bit different from the rest of the session. Uh, and very briefly, what it can be seen as is when we think about topologies of band structures, we can think about these shapes. So we can have, for example, a sphere, a cup, and then something like a mask. So these objects are topologically different in the sense that uh, there is a different amount of holes in these structures. So when scientists look at topology of band structures, they think in similar way. And one interesting aspect of this is that, for example, you can deform uh, your sphere into something which looks out like a cup, but without a hole. But creating a hole, um, you need to do something very special to the band structure of the material. And this moment here, pow, represents when this change actually happens. Uh, another way to look at it is to actually put these different objects on this ladder. Uh, so, for example, we have something without holes, then cup, and glasses, and uh, this pretzel. And uh, on this ladder, the steps represent uh, the quantization of electrical conductance. So even if you guys will rush now for, for example, for a poster session, or you just get bored during my talk, what I want you to kind of take away message is the following. So in this talk, I'll talk to you about this manganese bismuth telluride. This, um, this is a bulk crystal of it. So it's a layered material which can be cleaved. We use scotch tape to clip it down to several layers thick. Uh, we load it into the cryostat, often in the dilution refrigerator, and then we can completely reproduce this ladder, um, measuring devices made out of this material. So the first representative of topological materials is, of course, quantum Hall effect, as you are all familiar with it. Uh, it was measured by von Klinsig in two-dimensional electron gas. So here, what happens when you cool the sample down, um, it's a essentially a layer, two-dimensional layer of electrons down to low temperatures, you apply high magnetic field uh, and you get electrons inside this material to orbit. And you get, if you measure Rxx and Rxy, in Rxy you get this beautiful quantization and get steps um, as a function of magnetic field. So later on, after von Klinsig, Thales, uh, in fact, from the University of Washington, developed a theory which explained that these numbers here uh, can be called Chern numbers, and they can be extracted from knowing the Berry curvature of the band structure and integrating it. And basically different Chern numbers, they inform us on different topologies of band structures. For example, Chern number zero, most of the time would be topologically trivial, 
but non-zero Chern number would be topological non-trivial. And this is the way we can distinguish them. And then a very simple way to actually know this, for example, if you are not a theorist, is to just measure uh, Rxy and Rxx in topological materials. So then you can learn about Chern number in quite easy way. So that was the first example of topological materials, but now we know that 20 to 50 percent of all materials are topological in some sense. It doesn't mean that all of them are topological insulators um, or, for example, quantum hole effect, but it means that some aspects of band structure are topological. Uh, so in this talk, what I'm going to talk to you about is I'll show you how we can engineer non-trivial topologies of band structure in various ways. I'll show you phase transitions between states with different topology and we, how we can visualize and measure it in uh, atomically thin devices. In particular, I'll be talking about how a material which has a normal or trivial band gap, as it's shown here, can be moved through critical point to an inverted band gap to essentially get a topological and non-trivial state of matter. And lastly, I'll talk about what's happening inside that this gap. In particular, I'll show you how dissipationless edge modes form and how we can use them in some sort of simple devices. And the material system I'm going to talk to you today is this manganese bismuth telluride. I already showed you bulk crystal. So this is just a side view of a single layer of this material. So it has this laps of tellurium, bismuth tellurium, and then manganese in the middle. It provides the magnetism uh, pointing out of plane. So I'll show you how in this material we can engineer different Chern numbers. We can go from Chern number zero to Chern number one, for example, going through this critical point here, and also how we can add additional uh, edge modes, so further tuning Chern number uh, in this system. So uh, the key physics here uh, originates from something which is called Chern insulator or quantum anomalous hole effect. And the way you can think about it is the following. In case you take a three-dimensional topological insulator, uh, which is a bulk material in which you have special types of surface states. So the bulk would be insulating. It can be seen on this schematic at the bottom where conduction band and balance band are separated by the gap. And in this gap, you have a surface state. So bulk is, has a gap, but surface doesn't have a gap. And the surface state has Dirac-like dispersion and has certain spin momentum locking. So in case you can thin this material down, so make a thin film out of this magnetic topological insulator, and then essentially introduce magnetism into the lattice of your topological insulator in some very gentle way, what you will find is that instead of a gap, uh, a gapless state like surface state here, you will start developing a mass gap uh, on the surface of the material. So your material will become insulating not only uh, in the bulk, but also on top and bottom surface. And the only only conducting state left would be the edge state. So uh, the edge state is depicted here as this green line, and it's called chiral edge state. It, it's a state which winds along um, the perimeter of your material. So ingredients for building such um, material are the following. Uh, currently in the community, people normally use bismuth antilurium, uh, bismuth, bismuth telluride type of materials. They are very well studied, very well understood. So they learned how to very carefully tune this material so that they are intrinsic enough because for example you want your fermi level to lie in the gap you don't want to be somewhere far away in conduction of balance band and then you also need to introduce magnetism very carefully but in a way that it doesn't destroy other aspects of this topological material so uh, during the last 10 years there was a lot of progress in chromium of vanadium doping of these um, topological insulators to get into this very interesting physics and uh, uh, it Eventually, experimentally, it was demonstrated in this paper by Suzu Chang and co-authors in Science in 2013. And later on, many groups uh, reproduced these results. For example, this result is from Goldhaber Gordon Group in Stanford. So what you can see here, and if you look very carefully at the scale bar, you can see that this sample is several millimeters in length and probably half a millimeter in width. So it's a film grown by molecular beam epitaxy, but then if you cool it down to very low temperatures and apply some gate voltage to tune the Fermi level in the gap, what you will discover is this beautiful ferromagnetic loop with quantized uh, Rxy and uh, basically zero Rxx. So this is a very, very beautiful state. And the challenge of this state is that it's uh, rather fragile. So, I mean, of course, I'll talk more about the potential of this type of electronic state, but uh, in reality, in experimental systems, which we have right now, quantum anomalous hole effect cannot be measured uh, above 2 Kelvin. So 2 Kelvin is more or less state of the art. And the main challenges are related to disorder, 
because this material is grown by MBE, uh, it's not a stoichiometric compound. So you essentially create disorder by introducing magnetic ions. And the, those disorders, they affect mobility. Um, they affect, for example, Fermi level distribution, et cetera. So there is a challenge of the need to improve such type of state. But you, we might ask ourselves a question, what if we have um, an ideal state like this? What this topological quantum matter could bring us in this particular example? It would be quantum whole, quantum anomalous whole state. So there are many things. Uh, one is that it can bring us this low dissipation electronics. I'll talk more about it later in the slides, but essentially this edge state, which forms a uh, chiral edge state, it has very low dissipation. So regardless of the length of this edge, you would get exactly the same resistance. Uh, also, these um, modes, they can be, the direction of the propagation can be controlled. So this allows to have non-reciprocal devices made out of uh, these materials. There are other aspects, for example, you could locally control your number and create some sort of PCB board, but out of topological material. Uh, in fact, topological quantum matter is heavily used in metrology. The resistance standard we have is quantum hole standard, which can be measured up to very high precision. And now quantum anomalous hole samples also approach the same level of precision. And there are a lot of proposals um, essentially to use these materials for topological quantum computing. There are discussions on how we can make this, um, for example, quantum hole states uh, interact and also combine superconductors with topological insulators and use them for some sort of non-abelian quantum computations. And uh, on this graph here, the bottom part would be the uh, applications at very low temperature and upper part, you would ideally want to have something which works at room temperature if you want to use that in some sort of practical devices. So now uh, alternative solution to uh, all this quantum anomalous hole or Chernobyl insulator physics is to create an intrinsic material. In fact, it was created um, uh, in this breakthrough paper published in Nature in 2019 by Mikhail Otrokov. He had a talk on this conference on Tuesday. Uh, these bulk crystals were grown and then uh, investigated by various means. So what they and other groups demonstrated in the beginning is that this is a very promising system, first of all, because it's created from a different familiar topological insulator. For example, in this case, it's lead bismuth telluride, but then you substitute lead by magnetic ion manganese, and then you create all these physics. And the good thing is that around Fermi level, you don't have much contribution from this magnetic ion. So your Low energy physics is basically topological insulator physics. It's just manganese provides uh, magnetism, which is introduced into the lattice by having it. And another aspect of this material is that it has a very rich magnetic phase diagram. So you can have different magnetic states. So in ground states, it's layered uh, antiferromagnet between the layers, but then you can apply an external field, cant the spins to have canted AFM state and finally ferromagnetic state. And for us, people who work in 2D materials, it's very good because it's uh, available um, in cleavable form. So we can cleave these devices and um, we can cleave these crystals and essentially create this very nice, for example, this is 50 by 50 micron flake of homogeneous thickness. And then we can use it in a stack with other materials, for example, with superconductors or with other magnetic materials. So it gives us a lot of um, opportunities in creation of novel quantum states. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to present you results which are mainly concerning transport measurements. But when we were studying this material, we were looking at it from multiple points of view. So our approach is not only combining transport, but also using uh, something which is called microwave impedance microscopy, which can locally map out the conductivity in this material. So we can say locally if material is conducting or insulating and then change the gate voltage, magnetic field, et cetera. And we also looked at the magnetic states uh, with magnetic uh, circular dichroism or care effect. So essentially we know with a micron resolution, if we have any domains or what's the magnetic state of the flake we are looking at. So uh, with transport measurements, I just want to go briefly through things we can learn from it. So as I already explained, we can know the chair number, uh, but then, uh, but then essentially what I'm going to show you is I will show you some sort of um, maps here. So these maps uh, are plotted in the following way. On the horizontal axis, we have gate voltage. Uh, in this case, it's shown as NG. Uh, on this uh, axis, we have magnetic field. And this color map represents uh, measurements of RXY. So this uh, essentially looking at the chair number here, 
and and arcs why we can learn uh, what kind of chair number we have on this map and here uh, ticks represent different magnetic states so we can go from antiferromagnet to canted antiferromagnet and then to ferromagnet and then uh, gate voltage allows us to change the Fermi level position because our materials are atomically thin. And then finally, in many of our devices, we have dual gates, so we can uh, independently from changing carrier density in the material, populate uh, top and bottom surface with electrons or holes or nothing, and then create a certain electric field inside our material. So all these are uh, tuning knobs which we will use. All right, so. I spoke a little bit about um, edge states, so let me show you how they look like when we use this microwave hypnotized microscopy. These measurements were done on our devices in collaboration with Professor Yan Tao Tsui at the University of California in Riverside. So we take a whole bar of this material, we choose a small area here, and we make maps, uh, so special maps by mapping uh, this MIM signal. So the color scale here represents dark is insulating, bright is conductive. And what we can see is uh, when we change gate voltage, when we go from something which is in the balance band through the gap to the conduction band, we find that our material is uh, uniformly conductive when we are in balance band. But in this region between 30 and 40 volts, something interesting happens when we only have the edge state which um, shows up in conductivity. One more thing you should note is that this scale is nonlinear, so the difference of conductance between this edge and the bulk is orders of magnitude. So it's you can think about it as um, logarithmic scale. We can take one of these um, gate voltages in particular where we see this edge state, and we can conduct transport measurements. So transport measurements at high magnetic field inform us that the churn number is indeed one or minus one, depending on the sign of magnetic field. So not only we can see that there is the edge state, we can also know exactly that there is one chiral edge state, so we can know the nature of it, and we can also know the churn number of uh, this system. So we establish now that we have edge states there, and let's see now what happens with the bulk. So with the bulk, the measurements are a little bit more tricky, but bulk measurements can inform us on what happens with band structure, because when we do transport measurements, uh, edges essentially shunt um, our bulk, so we cannot know much about it, but still there are ways to, to study it. So in this map, I'm showing you the bulk conductivity, and we measured it in several ways. I'll just show you one for simplicity, for the sake of time. And again, insulating state is something dark, and conductive is something bright, bright yellow in this case. We know chair numbers, uh, we measure edge transport independently, and we can know that there is chair number minus one here and chair number zero here. So now let's look carefully what happens when we tune magnetic field and carrier density in this material. So when we are on the left side of this plot, when magnetic field is set to zero, our material has a chair number zero. So we know that the gap is most probably not inverted. And we can see how the Fermi level moves uh, across the gap. And here in the middle, we see this insulating state. On the right side, we have the same situation, but with chiral edge state in the middle. And I already showed you how this chiral edge state looks like. And we can tune Fermi level through this material. Uh, and what you can see is that when we have chair number minus one, the bulk is highly insulating, which makes sense because that's how it's supposed to be. And um, at the bottom, I have the my magnetic states outlined. So antiferromagnet, canted antiferromagnet, and ferromagnet as we increase our magnetic field. So let's look carefully at this gap behavior now, how it evolves. So nothing happens up to practically two Tesla. And then there is some interesting event here. So you can see a kink in resistance. And also that resistance starts to kind of deviate towards the bottom of the plot. At this point here, what happens is that uh, you essentially form a conductive state uh, when you tune the gate voltage. For example, if you would make a vertical line cut here, you would see that you meet this conductive state and both of these gaps kind of are not very pronounced. And then when we increase the magnetic field further, we start to open this much more pronounced gap here. Uh, and then Essentially, what we can see here is that it's a prime example of topological phase transition when you have chair number zero, chair number minus one, and then you tune through that transition by magnetic field by changing magnetic state. So what 
we just observed in this nanoscale device is topological phase transition. And um, in the schematics I showed you previously, this topological phase transition shows up as this pow sound, essentially when you open a hole in your band structure. So you change the topological class of your band structure. Uh, now we continued working on this material. And what we found is that in principle, we can build much higher quality uh, devices. And I just briefly want to mention that the key uh, the key transition, the key magnetic transition is transition from antiferromagnet to candid antiferromagnet. In high quality devices at very low temperatures, we observe that as soon as we apply this critical field HC1, we immediately get to churn insulator state. So quantization happens uh, very, very rapidly. So, and this state is the key. And just in comparison with this device generation one, which I showed you before, there is this broader transition here, and this transition here happens very fast. And there are several components to why this transition is broad. One is disorder in the crystal, another is disorder in, in samples. So these samples are cleaner, they have higher mobility, and also they are fabricated in a cleaner way. Uh, but also there is a electric field effect, which I'll briefly discuss further on in the slides. And this allows us to essentially tune the broadness of this transition. So now um, I want to further show you the richness of this phase diagram. So I already showed you this map, but let's have a look at it again. Again, it's carrier density magnetic field map, and we are measuring RXY here. Um, and essentially, we have a certain electric field applied in this dual gate device. So what we found is that there are several states, right? There is chair number one state, chair number two state, chair number three state. So chair number one state I already discussed with you. It's uh, essentially a churn gap state. When we have inverted band structure, we create um, this type of topological state. But then through many measurements and many tests in which I will not go into details, we found that uh, essentially chair number two is combination of churn gap and Landau level in the conduction band of this material because the samples have higher quality so we can also observe Landau level physics. And chair number three within our parameter space is also chair number one plus uh, Landau level index two. And you can kind of see uh, the unusual situation in this particular material from the following plot. If we make a line cut here through the purple line, what we can see is that uh, first we develop chair number one state as we increase uh, magnetic field and then chair number two. So this is unusual. This is not typical way it happens in quantum hole systems, but that originates from the fact that these two states are have different topological origin, essentially. Uh, so it's not a standard sequence of churn number versus magnetic field. Uh, let's now focus also on this point. I want to briefly show you how we can control this um, topological phase transition essentially uh, or this critical point with electric field. So we have dual gate. So if we park magnetic field at given uh, given number close to that transition, we can up, uh, change two gates and then change electric field and also change the carrier density in the material. What you can see here is this oval uh, outlined like this. And inside it, we have uh, Rxy, which is above 95% of H over E square. So the chair number is approaching one. And also Rxx is low. So both are clear signatures of formation of chair insulator one state. And then you can see that as a function of electric field, we can move in that state and away of this state as it's shown on these line cuts here. So by just applying small electric field in the order of um, 0.2 volts per nanometer, we can control this state quite well. So we were wondering what's the origin of this, if we are controlling magnetic state or maybe we are controlling the band structure. And again, we did a bunch of measurements to be able to understand it. As I mentioned in the beginning, we also did uh, magnetic circular dichroism, which informs us on the uh, magnetism in the material. We found that uh, electric field doesn't do much with magnetic state when we are parked at a given magnetic field. It's the carrier density which is um, affecting um, the essentially the magnetic magnetic state. But it's inconvenient for us in a sense that um, carrier density changes also Fermi level. So we control both Fermi level and magnetism. So what we found instead is that the explanation of this effect is rather simple. We have two surfaces on which we need to align Fermi levels to form a churn insulator state. Both of them are gapped because of the magnetism. But then um, essentially we need to get to a certain 
sweet spot, if you like. So electric field at which top and bottom surfaces are fully aligned uh, with respect to energy. So when we align these two gaps, then we can observe a very nice churn insulator state. But as soon as they are misaligned, uh, essentially we have conduction on both top and bottom surface and this edge state doesn't form. And similarly, if we apply opposite electric field, we can also switch this uh, chiral edge state off. Uh, all right, so I showed you these four different distinct topological state. I showed you how to hop between them, how to move on this ladder. And this is exactly the ladder I was talking in the very beginning that by changing electrical conductance, we can create these different shapes with different amounts of poles. And in this particular material, we can move in this ladder with magnetic state, electric field, and doping. So now in the last uh, three minutes, I'll quickly show you some more results which we got. So um, another way to control the chair number in this material, which we found is just thickness dependence. Uh, we found that in thinner flakes, we can have chair number one, and then in thicker flakes, we can have chair number one, two, and three. And uh, essentially, just to give you an idea of what, how we can use it, we can try to combine these two flakes. So what we can do, we can search for flakes we have, which have natural steps. So we do exfoliation, we find, for example, step between four layers and six layers, and we expect this situation to happen. And we did measurements to essentially map out the chair number in uh, this material. So in each domain, we can separately measure chair number, and then we can see if we can recreate the situation in a fixed point of our phase diagrams. So we map out in chair number in each of these domains. We know that in domain one, there is a chair number one located inside this space. And in domain two, there is chair number two and chair number one. So we can just overlap them and see that there is this yellow part of phase diagram in which this condition should be fulfilled. And now we can actually test the idea and see if there is a chiral edge state in between. So uh, the way to do it was to essentially build special types of devices with many electrodes and think about geometry and think about how chiral edge states are moving around in our samples. So if our assumption is true and we can create the situation winding edge states clockwise in this material, what should happen is that we should send our electrons from this terminal and we should be able to detect equal amount of electrons terminals eight and nine because one chiral edge state should move along the perimeter of this domain and another one should move along this junction interface in case our assumption is correct. And that's indeed true. You can see it when you measure drain current going to terminals eight and nine, and you see this perfect division 50-50 in this yellow shaded region. So you can see now that this junction actually forms, uh, acts as a beam splitter for electrons. So you send two electrons, one goes right, another goes left. And uh, I won't go too much into details, but essentially we did other types of tests. One of them was to demonstrate that regardless of the length of this edge state, the situation is indeed exactly the same. So again, it shows the topological nature uh, of these types of modes here. And we did all uh, other measurements uh, confirming essentially that this configuration of edge states is correct. And you, would say, well, there are a lot of literature on chiral edge modes on the step edges of topological materials. In our case, um, the situation is slightly different because we can essentially tune this, um, we can couple it to transport, our edges are very long. In this case, it's mechanically exfoliated, but it's 100 microns, which is a lot for our types of devices, and it also enables complex device geometry. So this particular domain is in the order of hundreds microns, as I mentioned. Another way to look at it is to see how this relates to other similar system. So in quantum hole, we know that we can create PN junctions, for example, and we can create this chiral edge modes on the interfaces. So in magnetic topological insulators, you can write domains with magnetic force microscopy and create similar edge modes. But in our work, what we see is essentially a unique situation where sharing insulator state and quantum hole interplay with each other and then we can nature the form of these junctions by just choosing different thicknesses. Okay, so I'll be wrapping up. I just want to briefly mention that we can also control this uh, state with essentially using both magnetic field and carrier density. Um, what I'm showing you here, I'm 
kind of going a little bit quickly, but what I'm showing you is the measurements when, again, we are sending current from terminal one and detecting it at eight and nine. So we can control the behavior of the system. We can have it as a current divider. We can turn off of this chiral edge mode. So essentially going from terminal one to terminal eight only. And then we can also completely switch off the topology going to low magnetic field. And this completely reproduces um, this phase diagram. So lastly, the important aspect of these materials is that essentially going to high temperatures, high by means in cryogenic sense high, for example, in this case, we went up to 60 Kelvin. Uh, this behavior does change. So uh, this uh, essentially topological current divider becomes worse in the sense that there is deviation from perfect behavior, but you can still observe that even going up to 60 Kelvin basically still has this behavior. And this correlates very well with our and other people measurements on topological states in this material, which in fact survive up to liquid nitrogen temperatures in case you apply high magnetic field. Um, all right, I um, hope I demonstrated to you a little bit of what we learned from this material manganese bismuth telluride. Um, there are many interesting aspects of it, but to be more simple, I hope that I showed you that we can create easily these different shapes in terms of topology of band structures using this as a model system. And we found a lot of ways how we can change um, the topology so we can change these shapes and essentially create new states. And then we can further combine them. All right, that's what I have for today. Thank you very much. And feel free to ask me questions or email me questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry. So the total questions, question number one, Sagi. Thank you very much, Dmitry. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I have two questions regarding uh, your talk. So one is how insulating is the bulk of your system? And mm -hmm. the second, you comment on the uh, formation of domain walls in your system, because I think that's bad for your dissipational transport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so question number one, the bulk, for example, in this measurement is uh, above one mega ohm. It's in the order of two mega ohm, and it's a two terminal measurement, so not very precise. Um, and this measurement is done at 2 Kelvin. When we go to millikelvin dilution for each temperatures, bulk there is probably giga ohm. So very, very, um, very, very insulating. Uh, in terms of domains, we have not seen yet domains in a sense when we map out the magnetism, we cannot see much domains. Domains do form if you, for example, combine different thicknesses. For example, in this case, um, I mean, of course, you have two domains, so there might be the main wall kind of pinned to this, but it would also depend if uh, thicknesses of these flakes are even or odd. We studied a little bit uh, the dependence of even an odd layer number on the magnetic state, and we found there are some differences. So in case you, for example, form um, three layer and four layer domain, um, with the crystal step, then you would indeed have different magnetic states in these two domains because the critical fields would be different. Did that answer your question regarding domains? Yes. Uh, so I think in, in chromium doped bismuth telluride samples, I think usually the domain walls are um, forming and they are around 500 uh, micrometer in, in size. Do you know any kind of uh, magnitude on, in your system? So in our case, we mapped out domains with RMCD. So we have micron uh, scale resolution, and we did not see them in the flakes ranging from, let's say, 10 to 100 microns. If you take a homogeneous flake of the same thickness, you don't see domains. But I mean, there are MFM studies of similar systems where people indeed can see some domains. And I honestly don't remember the order of magnitude. It's probably small because we cannot see them. So it's smaller than one micron. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I will ask one myself. So the Dmitry, the chiral edge states are expected to have some well-defined dispersion characterized by the Fermi velocity. Is there any way you can uh, assess this quantity in your measurements? Uh, we haven't done that. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure how we could. Um, I don't know, maybe some STM colleagues could help or something. Maybe from there we could learn dispersion. Yeah, we, we, we cannot tell it. We just 
basically we know the chair number and we know that it's quite robust in the sense that we can measure quantization up to rather high precision within what we have in our laboratory. So that's what I can say. But yeah, we don't know Fermi velocity. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions, last chance? No? Okay, let's thank our speaker once again. And I am closing this session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.